Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to i5 for the iPhone, episode 66, Palindrome. This is the Fine Fine Show. We scour the App Store, we find tips, news, tricks, and goodies, and then we have a donut while we enjoy them all together. Number one. So let's start off with a couple just little random things that I've noticed lately that are just pretty cool about iOS 7, and I would like to pass along to you now. The first cool thing was pointed out to me by Zombie Brains on Twitter. Hello, Zombie. You know the analog clock icon on your home screen or, or wherever you've moved it to? It's the native clock app. It has a second hand that moves in real time. Have you ever noticed that? I'm not sure I would have ever noticed it had it not been pointed out to me. Here's another cool thing. I told you recently about TweetBot 3, which is my very favorite third-party Twitter app. Just got a nice, nice new update. Not even an update, it's a standalone app. One of the only things I didn't love, though, about the new app and the new look were the rounded profile pictures in my feed. I felt like they seemed out of place somehow. Well, the app has been updated, and now we all have the choice to change them back to square profile pictures, if we so desire, which more closely matches the way that Twitter itself displays them. Genius! Brilliant! Choice is good! Let's party! Number two. Hey, you. Yes. Have you downloaded Google Play Music yet? Show of hands. No? If you haven't, run Do Not Walk to the App Store because Google Play Music is a free app on iOS that's one part music player, one part music discovery tool, all parts great. With both All Access, which is a, a service of Google, and then the standard service, the Google Play Music app lets you listen to your music collection pretty much anywhere, not just on your iPhone, but really on any computer. All your music is stored online, so it's all synced. You can listen across any device that uses your Google account, even on the web. You can listen to unlimited songs. You can create custom radio stations from songs or artists or album. This starts to sound a lot like, you know, something that Spotify or RDO would, would offer. You can listen to radio without skip limits. You can get recommendations based on your tastes, what type of music you like. You can even get playlists put together by what Google calls their music experts. You can add up to 20,000 of your own songs from your personal music collection using your Mac or Windows computer, even a Linux computer if you got one of those lying around, and no ads. If this sounds too good to be true, well, you should know that to access all the power of Google Play Music, you do need to pay $9.99 a month for the all access plan. That gives you the ability to stream or download to your iPhone anything in Google's catalog, which is now like 20 million songs. So this is stuff outside of your own collection. But again, if you've got a nice big collection with the 20,000 of your own songs, you're already off and, and going with Google Play Music. I love it. I'm not paying Google anything. I've just decided that I don't need to pay yet another service, $10 a month. I already do that for RDO, but I did go ahead and add a bunch of my songs for my personal collection some time back, and it's propagated really nicely here on the iPhone app. The app is very well designed, and as advertised, it's a really neat mix of my own stuff and stuff I've never heard of, which for music nerds is almost always a good thing. Number three. Hey, who wants to write a story? Something really good, a murder mystery maybe, or something romantic? Of course, we all want to be authors, but can you write something really short for me? Because I don't have a lot of time here. If so, you're in luck. There's a new app called Spine that lets you publish and share what it calls tiny stories. How tiny? Well, it's a five-sentence story, in fact. All you do is compose a five-sentence story of any kind and publish it in one of Spine's categories that it has set up for you. Spine calls itself the first social network for writers of all styles. I don't know if that's completely true, but certainly writers of, of brevity. You can find and follow fellow authors and friends and read their stories. You can rate the stories that you love and see how your stories are, are doing. I kind of like the sound of this because I like things short and sweet. We're all just 
busy, right? Life is hard. I never write anything very creative anymore because I think, ooh, I'd like to write a book. That's like gonna take like years. Or some sort of a really smart essay. That takes like uh, still a while. Or even a well thought out blog post can seem really daunting. Five sentences though, that I think I can do. And so can you. In fact, I'd like to read some of yours. You know what to do. I five at twit.tv. Number four, we got an email from Kevin in Bend, Oregon, who has a little duh tip for us. He writes, many times you may want to listen to the audio only from a video podcast when you put your iPhone back in your pocket or you just want to turn your screen off. When you turn your screen off though, or switch to the home screen, your video podcast pauses. This is Twit. Well, if you turn your screen off or switch to the home screen, you can start the audio only from the podcast just by accessing the control center or lock screen and pressing play. The podcast continues to play with audio only. Now, I know that this seems pretty obvious to a lot of you, but we do kind of get this duh tip a lot. It's a reoccurring thing as people discover it and they want to pass it along. So I know that not everyone realizes that videos can still be accessed as audio only, so it's worth reminding. You could be in your car, on a walk, at the gym. Those are all times where sometimes I don't really have the, the wherewithal to watch a video, but I still want to listen. Audio is pretty powerful all on its own sometimes. So thanks, Kevin, for the duh tip. Finally, number five. Over the weekend, a friend happened to message me via Facebook Messenger, which doesn't happen that often. I'm kind of using SMS with most of my friends these days. But the message totally confused me because Facebook Messenger got a completely new design. It's been updated for iOS 7. And in the time since I last used it, it completely changed. That's actually the beauty of turning on automatic app updates. Sometimes things change way in the background. Even the icon itself is different in my social folder. And I didn't even recognize it. I was like, what's this app and who's connecting to me through it? It's Facebook. Here's the best part though. Original in-app sounds have been added. They sound, I don't know, kind of like drum circle-y? I don't even know what I would call these. I'm not sure what they sound like, but I like them. Also, Facebook Messenger is no longer just for Facebook friends, if you ever felt it was like limited. Now you can message people in your phone book and use Facebook Messenger, so it becomes an SMS alternative more than ever. It's easy to add contacts, you just enter a phone number. What's not to like here? Well. You might not like Facebook. Some people just, they're never gonna like Facebook. But if you do use Facebook, you connect to people that way, Facebook Messenger as an app has gotten better than ever. If you ever see or hear of a great app or trick on i5 and you wanna go back over it or pass it along to somebody else, you can hop over to our show notes at twit.tv slash i5. That's where all of our links live as well and where you can subscribe to this fine show with the feed of your choice or add the show to your favorite podcast app. Email us at i5 at twit.tv, leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5, or send us a video with an app review of your own. I'm Sarah Lane, this is i5 for the iPhone, and we'll see you right here next week. Thanks for watching.